Hi, this is Bill, and um, this is going to be my uh, initial thoughts and uh, of the ZD Racing ZRE buggy. There are actually three versions of this car, and uh, this is the least expensive version, which has a plastic chassis and, and mostly plastic parts throughout. There are some aluminum parts, such as the aluminum shock caps and aluminum shock towers, uh, but for the most part, uh, the Ackerman bar is also aluminum. Uh, but for the most part, this is a relatively light buggy. It weighs about six and a half pounds ready to run with the uh, stock electronics. And uh, as compared to some of the other buggies, which are, you know, nine and a half, ten pounds uh, for the heavier models. Uh, that being said, this vehicle does come with a, a three cell LiPo. Um, it comes with a, a, a 20C. 3,000 milliamp uh, pack. It does recommend uh, to charge at only 1C and it does come with a, an AC-DC charger. It comes with a, uh, an AC adapter here uh, as well as a, a DC port uh, that, that plugs in into the uh, to a real basic charger here that uh, has uh, you actually charge it just through the balance port so it's got a built-in balance, uh, balance charger and this, this particular charger here can handle both 2 cell and a 3 cell. Uh, it charges at a uh, a, a one amp uh, charge rate. So one amp for 3000 milliamps would make this probably about a three hour charge. Uh, I have not used this charger yet but I have been using a high capacity uh, charger. Uh, out of the box um, this is pretty much how the car comes. It's um, rather under dampened and under, under sprung. It, the, 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 the suspension is extremely loose and what I, what I found was um, the pistons that come in here are, have four large holes in them and what I did was um, I took two of the holes and I stuffed them with a toothpick and I cut off the ends of the toothpick and glued it all up with some CA and then I also added some additional uh, spring rates uh, to it. I put uh, eight millimeters of spacers in the front and ten millimeters worth of spacers in the rear and it seems to be a little bit a little bit better uh, for, for my liking and works pretty well on the track. So it's a, a much st stiffer setup. Um, one thing about this car, um, it advertises on the box that it, come, it, it does 50 miles per hour plus. Um, I actually installed my uh, GPS uh, on this car and did some speed runs with it and with the battery fully charged up right out of the box I was getting speeds around 33 or excuse me 36 miles per hour uh, which is fine per per perfectly decent for an entry-level car um, so then I, I, I went ahead and put a, a four cell battery pack in this thing ran the same stream setup the only thing I did is put the four cell pack in and then I was measuring speeds close to 53 miles per hour uh, unfortunately um, I got a little too um, excited with the speed runs and I ran it for too long and I burned up the motor and the speed control. So uh, one thing I'd caution, if you do decide to put a uh, four cell LiPo in this uh, with the box stock electronics, watch your temperatures, maybe get some uh, cooling fans on the electronics and uh, maybe only do your speed runs, uh, you know, limit your passes. Uh, it does say in the directions not to run for more than 10 seconds at full throttle. Uh, for short bursts, and I clearly was doing it, you know, for, for longer longer periods than that, and so I definitely damaged the the damage electronics. My own fault uh, because I didn't follow the directions. So 10 seconds is the limit there. Uh, one C charge rate on the battery that it comes with. Um, the tires that come with this car are actually pretty decent. Uh, they're hard compound. I actually had a good, um, even both on-road and off-road, um, they work pretty well. Although if you are going to run this on-road, you're going you're gonna to wear, wear this tread down pretty quickly. You might want to go ahead and invest in a set of uh, uh, on-road slick tires for that. But for off-road, I had a, had a pretty, good, pretty good traction control. It, it did quite well on the track. Uh, some other things that I would recommend. This, this, this car here actually saw a full day of racing. And it, you might be able to see in the video here, it, it, it saw a fair deal of rubbing. Uh, you see some tire tread uh, left on the body here from uh, other racers in the 1.8 skill buggy. Uh, this thing's seen lots of crashes in the first day of racing, lots of rolls, and technically not a single part broke, broke on it, not even with the plastic body shocks. Uh, one of the things I did 
uh, before taking this out racing is I went ahead and I reinforced the body. I put, uh, I used some goop you know, along with uh, drywall fiber mesh tape to reinforce the, um, around the body post in the front and the rear. That, that seemed to do, um, seemed to help out tremendously. Uh, another thing that I've done is I did add a uh, cooling fan and heat sink to the motor. This is, uh, this is really a 550 size motor. Uh, it's only a 2700 kilovolt motor, not, not, all, not very powerful, but getting it around the track it actually is not bad. Uh, typical uh, 1 8 Truggy design. Uh, I did drill a hole into the side of the, uh, um, of the receiver box, uh, which is really nothing, nothing more than just a dust cover. It's not waterproof, so I had no problem drilling a hole there. I also drilled a hole in the top so that way I could fit my transponder on top of the box and be able to swap that out between other cars when racing. The switch is actually uh, set up on top of the speed control and the wiring for the speed control seemed to get in the way with the switch so I used a couple of zip ties to move the wire out of the way so I can be able to flip the switch on and off and it wasn't too hard getting my finger up underneath the body be able to turn it on and off uh, getting set up for racing. The uh, stock servo that comes with it did not have enough throw to it, so there was severe understeer when trying to race. Uh, I went ahead and put in a $15 EXI D226F servo. Absolutely love it uh, for the price. You can't, you can't go wrong. In fact, this whole car was $92 shipped off of eBay. Uh, I went ahead, that's the reason why I have two of them here. I figured, hey, for $92 a pop, I'll just go ahead and buy a spare car. If parts break, then I'm set. Uh, surprisingly, no parts have broke yet. Uh, what I did have a problem with uh, was on the front, on, on each of the diffs, the, the little cups that come out of the diffs have these set screws. So you'll need to remove this little, uh, this rear plate um, here, and you also need to remove the front plate uh, on top here where the body mount is in order to get to that set screw. Uh, highly recommend removing the set screw, put a generous amount of thread lock on that set screw in there, and go ahead and reattach it. Same thing with all the wheels. There is a set screw that goes inside the axle here. Remove all the set screw from each wheel, put some thread lock, put it back on. Same thing when you put on the lock nuts, you want to put thread lock on those as well. Those are the, the main parts that I feel that need to be addressed uh, before you race the car. Uh, minor tweaks to the suspension. Uh, this is the stock suspension, uh, but with some minor tweaks and uh, a few other things, you know, a new servo. This thing's actually pretty decent enough to race, uh, you know, if you're racing at a club level. Uh, it did come with a, a battery cover box uh, that was uh, sealed, and I really didn't like that design. I kind of like, I prefer zip tie, so I bought, I bought this Velcro strap. I'm, I'm going to add two more, so there's three total on here. What I did is I used my rotary tool to drill out the side, uh, a side slot here, and also on the inside of the tray, so that way I can make that fit. Other things that come with the kit, it does come with, uh, with a decal sheet, so if you want to replace the body, you can be able to re reattach uh, your ZD Racing stickers. Uh, it's got a, a uh, comprehensive manual for just the radio alone, which, by the way, the radio, uh, it, it comes with a charge port on there, but if you read the directions, that says not to use rechargeable batteries. Go figure. It doesn't come with a charge adapter, but there's a port there, and they say not to use rechargeable batteries. Uh, it says use alkaline only. It does say to use four alkaline, which I'm using, although the tray has spots for eight. Uh, there's, they re-engineered it to only fit four in there. This radio is actually a um, three-channel radio. The uh, third channel selector is up on top. So if you need a third channel for whatever reason, it's there. Uh, it does have dual rate, your standard dual rate settings, uh, normal reverse settings, and, and, and whatnot throughout. Pretty standard phone grip, uh, 2.4 gigahertz radio. One thing that I did have a problem with was that I wanted to uh, swap radios out, and I tried to bind uh, my, one of my FlySky radios. It would not bind with this receiver. I went ahead and tried to put my FlySky receiver in there and I tried to program it. Uh, the, the, it. It got power and the servo was working fine, but I could not figure out how to get the speed control to recalibrate or program whatsoever with the FlySky radio. I spent about 30 minutes with it. 
I went through the instructions step by step and I could not get for any reason everything that I tried I could not get the speed control to be recognized through uh, through my FlySky radio so if you're going to use this speed control I believe I have I have reason to believe that it's only uh, set up to be used with this uh, this T3 GMN 2400 series radio so uh, other than that uh, if I do decide to upgrade later on, I'll probably upgrade a new speed control, I'll probably continue to use the same motors, just so that way I can use a FlySky radio uh, later on. The, uh, the instructions for this uh, are actually pretty impressive. Uh, it's very comprehensive, step-by-step, -step, lots of pictures, and lots of detail on how to take, the, take apart each component of the car. And really, this car is very easy to work on. Uh, it, it took me not even 30 minutes to rebuild to, to get into the front diff assembly, take it all, take the front end apart, and put it back together again. I did try to see if some parts would be compatible with other with other popular brands of cars, and it doesn't seem to be that I can tell. I, I've, I've checked uh, an Ofna car and I checked a Hamoto car, and neither of those parts seem to seem to work. So, but the good news is there are at least three or four companies within the US that are selling ZD racing parts currently so part support should not be an issue. Uh, another thing the goodie bag it does come with some zip ties which is uh, nice to help secure uh, some of your electronics around there. It comes with this extremely long antenna, in fact I can't even get that on the screen and uh, you really don't need all, all of that but it's uh, nice to have some spare uh, tubing. It does come with a, uh, a little baggie of spacers. I found that the spacers that came with it were insufficient. Uh, I had it to use uh, big bore spacers for the team associated to be able to make it work because I needed, you know, like I said, eight millimeters of spacing in the front, 10 millimeters in the rear, nowhere close to that in this include, included kit. So plan on buying some additional spacers. Uh, it also comes with uh, additional uh, servo saver adapters and I had to actually use these to make this work for my EXI servo which is it worked perfectly fine for that spline so I so there's four different uh, splines to choose from that comes with an app that was really nice it also comes with a little uh, velcro uh, set so if you want to add your transponder or any additional uh, electronics and a couple set screws and um, and lock nuts in case you um, lose some parts on there it also comes with some tools and I was really pleasantly surprised with that uh, almost all these tools are are going to work on the car with the exception of this wrench and I was surprised that it did not come with a 17 millimeter um, and on this wrench, so there's no way to use this tool to be able to, uh, to, to tighten your wheel. So you will need to purchase a separate 17 millimeter uh, socket wrench uh, to be able to tighten the wheels. Other than that, out of the box, I got one full day of racing on it. Um, look for a long term review of this soon. This is just kind of a short term uh, highlight of what to expect out of this car. Uh, I am so far. I'm, I'm fairly impressed with it. Uh, we'll see if it continues to hold up over the next few months, and look for some follow-up feedback. And be sure to click the link on the description of this video for more additional details, photos, close-ups, and any additional modifications that I make to this car along the way. Thanks for watching.